This video is just a quick preview of one of over 200 step-by-step -step percussion lessons included in our Conga Chops membership. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe and head over to congachops.com to start your free seven-day trial and check out everything we've got on the site. Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be expanding on what we learned in lesson 10 and talking a bit about the evolution of the bongo player's role in a more modern salsa context. This style of playing evolved in the late 80s and early 90s, when the salsa percussion section as a whole started to become a bit more refined in terms of the way they would play through an arrangement. The responsibilities of delineating sections and navigating the arrangement as a whole transitions from mainly being the duty of the timbal player to being a responsibility that is shared by the entire section. This modern or commercial style of salsa becomes characterized by much more organized arrangements in terms of the individual percussion parts within different sections and a way that draws from the sensibilities and nuances of American pop music. This leads to a more calculated approach, giving more attention to the melody and the overall arrangement of a given song and starts to tighten up the more jam session-like approach to salsa on behalf of the percussion section that was more common in the 60s and 70s. In general, this leads to more attention to detail when it comes to playing through different breaks and sections cleanly, as well as choices in orchestration as they pertain to each percussion instrument. The song we'll be analyzing in this lesson is titled Aquel Amor de Fuego by salsa great Tito Nieves off of his 1991 release entitled Déjame Vivir. For the purposes of this lesson, we'll start our analysis on the second verse of the song at minute 126. We'll hear that the percussion section is in the typical down position to help support the vocal melody. The timbalero is mainly playing cascara while playing some hits with the horn section, the bongo player is on bongo, and the conguero is playing a simple tumbao pattern mainly on one drum. The bongo player starts the 16 bar verse section with a straight martillo pattern and carefully picks his spots to play some language based phrases while paying attention to the spaces in the lead vocal. Being more selective within these open spaces can result in the bongo settle's phrases becoming a bit longer and at times more rhythmically complex, which can also include the use of riffs, not only language based phrases. In the second half of this verse, we can hear that the entire band is playing a bit softer, which leads to the bongo cero mainly playing martillo in an effort to support this change in dynamics and not distract from the vocal or the arrangement. This overall approach contrasts that of the bongo playing from the song in the last lesson, which consisted mainly of the martillo, with simple language-based phrases used freely throughout the verse section. Let's listen to the same section one more time. The unison break at the end of this verse creates some space in the arrangement where the piano plays a halftime feel and allows the timba little to set up the following section with a beautiful roll. This next section can be considered a chorus, much like we're used to hearing in a pop or R&B setting, which is characterized by a vocal refrain often performed by more than one background vocalist. The main difference in the percussion parts here are that the timbalero has now switched to the characteristic contra campana pattern, while the conga is playing its main groove on one drum, and the bongo now has the option to play some riffs and phrases with a bit more freedom. So you can hear that the timbales contra campana pattern adds a bit of intensity to the section which prompts the bongo to play some more rhythmically dense phrases. We then have a nice clean unison break about 8 bars into the section where the conga fills up some of the space by playing a baqueteo pattern for a full bar before the rest of the band comes back in. This section ends with a 2 bar horn soli that leads us into a short 6 bar bridge section where you'll hear the timbalero play a hit on the end of 3. <laughs> 